now, now, there we go. Now I can hear. Awesome. See, I, I uh, act like I'm not live until I can hear my voice. How is everybody tonight? Great. I got one good and one great, and the rest was... How's everybody tonight? Good? Or broken? Broken? I started saying that after church on Sunday, broken. But that's all right. Broken but healed is how I am. By the only one that can heal. Well, let's, uh, let's open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I, just, I thank you so much for the night. I thank you for the, the blessings you've given us, Father. What a great week you've already bestowed upon us. And Father, I thank you for this time that we're going to share tonight. I, I thank you for each and every person that uh, made time out of their schedule to come and, and uh, participate tonight, both online and, and in person. Father, we just want to grow in you. We want to learn more about you. We're hungry uh, to be fed by your word, and, and I thank you for each and every person that shares that hunger. And Father, tonight I pray that uh, our song would uh, glorify you and bless you. I pray that our time of study would also glorify you. Uh, and Father, I pray that you would impart wisdom uh, to us as we try to dig deeper into your words. Uh, Father, we just give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand? is one of my favorites. I was 
threatening Bill ahead of time. I could sing victory in Jesus every time we're gathered. And I, I said I was going to sing it tonight, no matter what was playing, but I couldn't do that. I could do it now. I don't know. That's, that's one of the best. Uh, prayer request or prayer listing. Uh, I do have a couple of updates on here that I'd like to, to point out. Um, one ad, I don't, I don't see them on here. Um, I don't have the detail that I'd like to have. I just haven't asked too many questions. But uh, Mayhew West um, has, has been battling something. I don't know what. Uh, he was in the ER this weekend. Wouldn't tell me exactly what. He was asking about everything else going on rather than himself. But let's lift up uh, Mayhew. Uh, I know he's been not feeling well, uh, so uh, I would ask you to be in prayer for him. But also, uh, First Baptist Church, Cowpens, uh, I know we, we had uh, done some things to help them. I went up and visited with uh, their pastor this week, and uh, they have such a sweet spirit in that church. But uh, let's pray for encouragement for them as they, they have about a two- to three-year road ahead of them uh, in a rebuild uh, situation that they're facing so but they're, they're, they're strong they're strong they're trying to figure out um, you know the church burned if you if you did not know that the day after Christmas uh, they had church services the very next day uh, what they're trying to figure out is how do you do Sunday school how do you do Wednesday nights Sunday mornings those type, they got Sunday morning solved they got that one figured out but uh, they, they're trying to solve the rest of the equation and, and I, you know, I want to give you a little praise. This is something kind of cool that I, I learned from it. Um, they don't even have a church office, right? But the Methodist Church, which is one block away, said you can use our, um, um, no, their, their, no, the house, <laughs> parsonage, <laughs> as an office. So that's now, they're using it as an office, which is just phenomenal. Um, couple other updates, Miss Irma Moore, uh, Jim's mother. Uh, did she move, Jim? Okay. So she's moved from Saluda to Morningside, and we have the addresses at the bottom for uh, the nursing home and retirement homes and, and such. If you want to drop a card, I would encourage you to do that. Um, and then the other, I, I failed to mention this last week on the back, the, uh, the listing of first responders was a little outdated, and, and so Ms. Carroll went and contacted uh, first responders all in the county, and what we're doing is rotating the, the names on that. That includes um, Sheriff's Office, PD, uh, EMS, does not include fire at this point, but it will. We're waiting on a list from them, but we're rotating and so, you know, we're, we're trying to get a different name in there every week. Just try to remember to lift these folks up as they go out and, and uh, uh, help us uh, in many ways, that, many ways that we don't even know. Any, any others that I've missed on here? Okay. Uh, Kelly's got one. Gail Smith-Williams. Ms. Aura asked us to remember Gail Smith Williams Hospice has been called in. Any others? Will had a seizure this morning and is uh, in at Newberry overnight. That's awesome. That's great. Rodney Menick, praise. You can talk to him. Hear his voice. That's awesome. That's awesome. Others. Young Miss Harley. Yeah, she, she went right through a battle, but she is home still right um, Jessica Doolittle mm.
definitely will tear up. Any others? Katie Rowe, is that son? Did you say son? And they all have COVID? Wow. Let's lift them up. Okay. And I'll say a praise too. I mean, we've got quite the crowd for a Wednesday night. This is awesome. I love that. Any others? Alan, you, would you pray for us, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we um, thank you for this time that we can come into your house, Lord. Thank you for the ones that are here and that are one, ones online, Lord, and we lift up these prayer requests to you, Lord. We pray for our president, Father, and we pray for all of his advisors. We pray for Congress and our whole country, Lord. And um, we also pray for our military and our law enforcement and our first responders. And we pray for the ones that are mentioned, Lord, tonight, Lord. We pray that you will just surround them with your um, comfort and your peace and most of all, your presence, Lord. And we just ask you to um, lift these ones up, Lord, that need your healing touch and your protection, Lord. And uh, we know that you are the great physician, Lord. And we just lift up these families, Lord. And we also lift up families that have lost loved ones recently due to COVID, Lord. And we just ask for you to um, come in our lives and these um, ones that are mentioned in a powerful way, Lord. And we just pray especially for, um, we thank you for Harley Trotter doing better, Lord. We pray for her strength and that she will just be have a full recovery, Lord. And we pray for Katie Rowe and her baby, um, boy Maddox, Lord, that they're experiencing COVID, that you'll um, heal them really soon, Lord. And, and we just lift all these requests to you, Lord. We pray for Will Pugh. And Miss um, the Gail Smith, Miss Gail Smith, Lord, as they come to a difficult time of having hospice come in, we pray you'll be with them. And Mr. Rodney Minnick, thank you for him doing better. And we pray for Jessica Doolittle. And we pray for Miss Irma Moore, Lord, as she's um, moved to rehab, Morningside in Greenwood. And we pray that you'll be with Mr. Mayhew West, Lord, that you will heal him completely and be with Miss Marianne, Lord, as well. And thank you for First Baptist Church in Calpins, Lord for persevering, Lord. Thank you for the pastor and our church family and their leaders. And thank you for all the ones that are helping them rebuild, Lord. And we just ask you to be with Pastor Jeff, Lord, as he brings this message, Lord. Thank you for your word and how accurate and true it is. And we know that um, you have the victory, Lord. We thank you that we all live a victorious life through the blood that Jesus shed on the cross, Lord. Thank you for him resurrecting, being resurrected from the dead. So we know that we have eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Call somebody who had uh, mentioned that they and, and Alan, thank you for praying for our president and our country. We we need to do that every day. And somebody commented on that uh, on Twitter today, and they said, you know, I paid for the president and the vice president. I don't. And he said, I don't pray for them for who they are necessarily. I pray to the, the one I'm praying to. I know he has all things in complete control, which is absolutely true. Um, tonight we're going to continue. Chapter 12, I had good intentions of finishing that last week, and we got through three verses. Uh, so uh, I have good intentions to finish it tonight, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and declare that I'm not going to finish it tonight. I, I, I've, I've made kind of a, a I don't wouldn't call it a split decision. I, I was wrestling with something over the last couple days as I was preparing for tonight uh, because you know, as we saw last week, chapter 12, it's a short chapter, but it has so much packed into it. Uh, I just don't want to rush it, and there's a particular piece that I'm going to defer uh, until next week, and, and that's why I brought this out. Uh, this is a drawing that uh, I did, or a chart that I did uh, a few weeks back, uh, where we talked about the timeline that was, uh, the 70 weeks that was talked about in Daniel and we, in particular, talked about 69 weeks of the 70 relating to the Israelites pre, pre uh, the church age. And then we had the church age that, that we're in now when um, the, the word is silent, if you will, to uh, the Israelites or the Jewish community 
uh, and then we would have still another week because you have 70 weeks. We, we need to understand what that 70th week is, that last week is. And we, we talked about how that is after the rapture and the church is called home at that point and then we go into the millennial kingdom. And so we hit this at a really high level uh, in that class, uh, but we never really talked about, oh, look at that, Kelly's got it on a board. Uh, we, we didn't really talk about uh, this week, right? The, the, the last week in detail. And we get glimpses of it in chapter 12. And so what, what the Lord's laid on my heart uh, to do next week, and, and, and I do want to show this little this book. This is, this is an amazing drawing. I love this uh, book. If, if, you want, if you want a book that's a very difficult read, but uh, amazing uh, as far as what he teaches, it's called Dispensational Truth or God's Plan and Purpose in the Ages by Clarence Larkin. Brother uh, Bill Chapman shared his version of this, which is falling apart, and I was able to find uh, a reprint of it, but it has this incredible drawing of the end times, and I know you can't, can you, oh, I guess you can't see it if I turn around, um, and now I can't tell if you're showing it or not, uh, but I'm going to try to talk through this next week. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about the 70th week, which weaves in Daniel, Thessalonians, and Revelation all together. And so that's what I'm going to try to do. Are you still showing the picture? Okay, I'm going to close it up now. So it is called, this, and you can look at it if you want. I'll have it up here. Dispensational truth or God plan and purpose in the ages. Uh, Clarence Larkin. He, he is a master, um, and I don't know if this is the right choice of words or what. It's, it's Jeff's version of what, what I think he is. Uh, a master at, at doing illustrations. I would call it like a mechanical engineer type person. And he's also a pastor. And he blended those two and he's got some just incredible drawings that explain things. Uh, it's, very, it's very strong. It's very difficult to read but it's very strong. So my intent next week and please uh, you know, let folks know. Hopefully we'll announce it the right way but a lot of folks are interested in the end times. I'm going to talk through the end times. I'm going to give you Jeff's opinion that ties in with several scholars. Uh, so uh, I will also throw out a disclaimer right now that truthfully we don't know, right? We don't know all the details. And so we can speculate the best that we can based on the knowledge that we have. Uh, but we're going to do that next week. And that, that's how we're going to button up the book of Daniel. And then we'll move on to uh, another study at that point. So tonight... We're going to continue chapter 12, and I'd made a couple of comments last week. Chapter 12, really, if you look at 10, 11, and 12 in Daniel, uh, it's, it's kind of a continuation. It's a flow. Chapter 10 explains the vision before it's told. Chapter 11 provides and announces the vision, and then uh, chapter 12 is a continuation and then kind of a postscript for uh, this vision. And uh, the last, last week, we got through the first three verses, and so we're not going to go back through that. We started on verses 4 through 7, uh, and that's where I want to pick up tonight. So we'll reread that, and we'll see how far we get. Um, my hope is that we get the majority of the way through, and then we'll just cover this next week. But verses 4 through 7, Daniel chapter 12, But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. And I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this river bank and the other on that river bank. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, How long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven, and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time times and half a time and when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered all these things shall be finished so there's a lot in these few verses uh, that that we're going to try to cover and we started on it last week we got we, we kind of stuck our toe in the water of, of these verses 
uh, when we started looking at it because we talked about the word shut the book up or shut up the words and seal the book. And, and, and really with the words shut up the words, if you will, it implied, implied that there was enough that had been shared at this point and that it should be sealed. And there was two aspects of sealing it. Uh, one was, uh, if you will, as, as you would see on a birth certificate or some official document, it's sealed, it's authentic, it's validated, uh, so it is sealed. But then there's another that says to seal it, to close it, to preserve the words. And if you think about what has been shared in Daniel alone, uh, in verse uh, chapter 11 and 12, we've seen these things that are going to occur. Uh, things such as world ruler, wo world ruler, who is uh, totally opposed to God. Uh, we've also seen a world religion based on the abomination of the desolation. Don't let that, you know, we, we talk about the abomination of desolation of being something that, that happens, but that is uh, picturesque, if you will, of a world religion that's happening at that time. Uh, we also talked about a world war that's going to occur that defeats this ruler, a time of great tribulation for I Israel lasting three and one half years, deliverance for the people of God after the tribulation, resurrection and judgment and reward of the righteous. You see, all of this has been talked about, and so uh, the vision says, or, or the angel says, to seal it up. You, you, you've seen quite a bit. It may be more than you can handle. Seal up the book. Uh, seal up the words at this point until the time of the end is what it said, the time of the end. So it, he has been shown a vision, and now it's time to close that vision, and we're going to get further instruction as we move on through. It says, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. And, and we talked about this some last week, how running to and fro, some people, in especially earlier days, talked about this may be indicative of, of travel, uh, travel to and fro all over the place, and information explosions. And, and last week we kind of closed with this thought from this uh, futurist who had talked about how, how fast knowledge will be shared uh, versus how it was shared. So uh, th what he talked about was in, in, uh, at 80, 81, uh, how long would it take to uh, replicate or duplicate all of the knowledge and his best guesstimate is it took 1,500 years to do that. Uh, and then how long would it take to duplicate it again? And that was shortened down to 250 years and then 150 years. And, and now we get to this point where they believe we double in knowledge every 12 hours. Now, I don't know how you could ever truthfully calculate that. That's, that's a, a conceptual type thought. It, but if you look at that in Daniel 12, does that indicate where we are as far as end of times, that we're getting closer because we're duplicating knowledge and we're traveling to and fro. And I just don't, I personally don't subscribe to that mindset. I think there's another thought, uh, and I asked you all to, to think about it some, and I, if anybody wants to throw out thoughts or comments, uh, we could do that. I'll, I'll be glad to give you my thoughts. I, I believe that this knowledge is, it, the, the, the to and fro, the knowledge experience that what we're seeing is related to the end times knowledge. If you go back through church history, um, I'm going to talk about this in a few minutes. There's been different time stamps. Um, I have to wait till I get to that. Where different uh, theological uh, discussions have been had by by the church uh, to to explore things, and the end times never has been one of those things until the last two to three hundred years. Prior to that. You looked at different, different uh, theological uh, topics, if you will. And so in my opinion, uh, this is talking more of moving to and fro and gaining knowledge towards the end time, which we are doing right now. As you look at what has happened over the last two to 300 years, the knowledge that's been gained towards the end times is exponential. And it's going to continue to be that way as we understand things better and better. And so I believe that's what is being discussed uh, in, in that moment. Um, I'm going to pause there. Thoughts or comments or questions? If not, I'll keep on moving. It says two others, one on this riverbank and the other on that riverbank. It's, it's interesting to note that we never, chapter 10, 11, and 12, we've never left the riverbank. We've always been there. Uh, but he made note of uh, one on either side, and now one 
uh, above water as well. And, and the angel is asking the other, not for the benefit of, of the other angel, but for Daniel, Daniel's benefit and our benefit. How long will this happen? How, how, long, how long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? And I love the picture that occurs right here. Right? It, it, and and I, I wish I, I had a linen outfit. I don't even know what that would look like. Uh, to give you this picture, but, you know, the, the man floating, and he raises one hand and then the other. He's in a solemn oath, praise moment, swearing upon God, not saying I'm swearing, but he was testifying how long this would be. Uh, and he emphasized in this, and he said a time, times, and a half a time was his answer. A time, times, and a half a time. Uh, and what that is indica it indicates is time is reference to one year. So time is one year, times is two years, and then a half year. So we get three and a half years is how that equates out. What is fascinating about this, and this is how you look at the Bible holistically and you understand and, and see the consistency throughout the Bible. We've seen this number, uh, this time period marked several times. Daniel uh, chapter 7 Yes, I do. I have these, these uh, scriptures referenced for you. Daniel ch chapter 7, verse 25, describes it as the period that the saints are given into the Antichrist's hands. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, describes it as the period between the breaking of the Antichrist's covenant with Israel and the erection of the abomination of desolation. Daniel chapter 12, verse 7, describes it as the duration of the time of trouble for Israel. Quotes there. Uh, Revelation 11.2 describes as the period uh, that the holy city will be, will be tread underfoot by the Gentiles. Revelation 11.3 describes it as the period of ministry for the two witnesses. Revelation 12.6 and 14 describes as the period of, of Israel uh, that is preserved, uh, the period that Israel is preserved by God in the wilderness. And Revelation 13.5 describes as the duration of the Antichrist's authority to rule and persecute and blaspheme God. And so we see several references, and, and that's really why I wanted to come back next week and talk about the things that are happening in this one week. Uh, it's interesting because what we see in the Bible, oh, I didn't know if I'm up there or not. Am I up there? I'm going to go ahead and go. Uh, what we see in the Bible is a lot that's discussed in the latter three and a half years, but not much in the first three and a half years. It's just kind of quiet, right? And so we're going to talk about, next week we're going to talk about what starts here, what happens here, and even into here a little bit with the timestamps that we get from God's word, not, not from man's word, but God's word on how we get to certain things and, and so it's, it's worth spending time looking at all that. Questions or comments? I want to keep pushing us through. Not that I'm trying to get us through everything. Daniel 8, 12, 8 through 13 is what I'll read next. Golly, I'm, I'm getting worked up up here again. One of these days I'm going to learn not to wear my vest. I was chilly earlier. Daniel 12, 8 through 13. Although I heard, I didn't understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall shall understand. I love that verse, by the way, chapter, or verse 10. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 1, days. Circle that if you have a chance. It says, blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,000 335 days but you go your way till the end for you shall rest and 
arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. Sorry, I'm looking back at something really fast. So, it says, although I heard, I did not understand. That verse actually gives me some comfort right and that may be kind of a strange thing to say but I study and I study and I study the Bible and there's things I just don't understand here Daniel is talking to an angel and he says I still don't understand right and so I, I don't feel so bad that I don't understand things all the time like I feel like I should as I'm reading God's word Daniel seems a bit anxious and he says what shall be the end of these things how, how do I get to it and the angel says go your way Go your way. The angel's telling Daniel to, to take a mental departure from this moment. He must be content with what God has revealed to him at this time, just as we shall be and should be content with what we understand as we're moving forward. It says, For the words are closed and sealed until the time of the end. He must make this mental departure and and just move on as God leads him through his life. It says this word to Daniel that the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end really should make us think. And this is where I want to talk about church church history. And I'm going to give you some broad strokes and I don't think this is in your notes and so I'll do this a little bit slower. Um, where I talked earlier how the, the discussion of end times has really been recent in, in the grand scheme of things. I always find it fascinating. Uh, I'm, I'm not a history major, but, uh, you know, as, as we talk about old history in the United States, we only go back to like 1700, 17, 1600? When did, when, did, when did Columbus come here? 1400, okay, so I was off a couple hundred years. Oh, sorry. I, I said I wasn't a history major. <laughs> that's really, and that's on camera. Um, but if you go to Europe and other places, ancient history is thousands of years ago. We think 1700s is a long time ago. Um, but if you look at, so now start thinking in terms like that. Let's, let's talk about church history. Church history, for the second and fourth centuries, the discussion centered on the doctrine of Scripture. Right? That, was the, that was the discussion. That was the focus, was the doctrine of Scripture. In the fourth century, they had a shift, and it was on the doctrine of God, Trinity. How does that work? How do you define what Trinity, the Trinity is? And so that was in the 4th century. The 5th century, the discussion really went to the doctrine of Christ in that time frame. 5th through the 7th century was on the doctrine of man. The 5th, and then it goes on to the 15th to the 17th uh, centuries, the focus was salvation. Salvation. Think about re re reformation that occurred during those times and, and discussions by Calvin and Luther and the Catholic Church and others. It was how, how are you saved was the discussion during that time with the church. In the 16th and 17th century, the focus was on the doctrine of the church. But the discussion of the end times really wasn't prevalent until you got to the 19th century through now. It's been the last two, three hundred years. And so if you go back to that discussion earlier about to and fro and the knowledge shall increase, We've seen a, a, an increase in knowledge over the last two to three hundred years on the end times because that's been the focus more of the church during the time frame. It says, moving on, man shall be purified. And, and I, I have to tell you, I, I, have, I have been centered, focused, I, I can't tell you the right choice of words on Daniel 12 verse 10 this week I have read it 
reread it, meditated, prayed. I've spent a lot of time on, on Daniel chapter 12, verse 10. Many shall be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. You see, I, I think today, I think today we're in this time of great divide. And, and we call it our nation, but I think it's across the globe of, of really a division between those who believe and those who don't. And while the church is doing well, I believe the number of believers is actually in, in the general population is decreasing. And we see this great divide. Those that are wise in the, the words of the Lord, of, of scriptures, shall be wise, will understand. But the wicked will do wickedly. They're going to continue. And we see that. We see that in our own nation. We see that in other places. Uh, it's very disturbing to me. But I, I, see, I see the world ever, just pulling apart this great divide that's occurring. And, and we have a battle before us that is indescribable to anybody. Uh, I, I don't even know how to put words around what we are tasked with doing as we are challenged to go, not challenged, commanded to go out into the world and share the gospel. And uh, we, have, we have to take that on in spite of this ever-growing number of people, wicked people doing wickedly in this world. I, I, I look I look for signs of hope in the scriptures, and, and this is a little bit of a preview, perhaps, of, of the message on Sunday. Uh, I mean, I absolutely find hope in God's word. I even talked about that on the voicemail that went out this afternoon. There's so much hope in God's word as you just read through the scriptures, but I also look for hope in different ways of how are we ever going to overcome this. And um, I'm going to be taking us back in the ancient of days when, when they had a similar situation and they did overcome. And, and, and I, just, I just want us to be so, so focused on what, what we're called to do. We need to come and be edified within the church on the scriptures and understand what God would tell us. But we, we cannot be hoarders of God's word. We can't hold it in here at all times. I, we, we, and this is part of what I preached about on Sunday. I, I believe the church has found this time of comfort where we come to church and we, and we enjoy sitting here and we invite people to come and sit with us. But if they don't come and sit with us, we don't take it outside like we should. And that's what we're called to do. And so for, as, as we look at this, we need to look at the task that's before us, to share the gospel. And for me to hand this book to somebody, uh, it, it could be meaningless if I hand this book to somebody on the street and I say, go read that, and you'll need, know everything you need, need to know about eternal life. It won't be read, right? And so in our lives and in our words, we have to be able to be the Bible to many until we can get them hooked on God's word and the salvation that they can experience through Jesus Christ. It's just an overwhelming task, but you know what? We all need to take that on gladly and be ready to go lead that charge everywhere we can. I'll get back to the lesson. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's right. This is the greatest, one of the greatest mission fields there is, is the United States. Yeah, that's right. It says, from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. It's a very specific uh, prophetic set of words there. Uh, basically what he's saying is from the abomination, you can start you know, marking your calendar at that point. Uh, 1,290 days later, it, it points to Jesus' return. Perhaps, 
as my cliffhanger for next week because there's three different dates. There's three, three different time stamps that we see in the Bible. We, we see, we see 1,260, we see 1,290, and we see 1,335, right? They, they, they all have different meanings, but they all interrelate and work together. And, and so we're, next week I want to, again, I'm, I'm throwing out teasers to get everybody to come back next week. We're going to talk about the differences in those, those days and, and what it points us to. It says, but you go your way till the end. You know, Daniel undoubtedly is, is excited about everything that's been shared with him uh, by this angel. And he, and he, wants, he wants more information. Uh, he wants to know. I, I can't even imagine standing there amongst multiple angels and, and getting this information. It just leaves you begging for more, asking for more, wanting more information that you can get. And he says, you need to go on your way. And, and I, I kind of chuckle at this because there's another great example in the, uh, in the New Testament, in the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 21, 18 through 22. I'll read this for you. Um, Billy will probably pop it up there before I get done reading. She always does. Let's, let's see if it was there. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, Jesus talking, you girded yourself and walked there where you wished. But you went, when you were old, you stretched out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he, he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me, said to Peter. Then Peter turned around and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved, follow him, talking about John, who also had leaned on his breast at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, but Lord, what about this man? And Jesus said to him, if, that, if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You just follow me. Jesus <laughs> said some incredible words there, right? He just told Peter that he's going to die. He's going to be martyred. And Peter looks at him and says, well, what about him? You know, what, what about him? I want to know about him. And Jesus says, you don't need to worry about that. Just follow me, right? Just follow me. And that's the same sense that we're getting here from uh, the angel to Daniel. Is just, it's just, it's time to move on. Just uh, go your way till the end. Keep doing what God has called you to do. Quit speculating. Quit worrying about things that are outside of your control. Just go and live your life and follow, follow God. And we know that Daniel was a very godly man. And, and so great words of instruction for us as we leave chapter 12, going on to our next study, whatever it may be, and, and we'll look at this next week. But great words for us, right? We need to study. Well, we, we can't sit here and dwell on it. There's people who will spend countless hours looking at it, looking at it, looking at it, trying to figure out what is the date, what is the date, setting a date, or whatever it may be. We just need to be faithful to Jesus and uh, read the scriptures and share the gospel with as many as we can. That's what we're called and tasked to do. And so as the angel told Daniel, go on your way till the end, that is what we're told to do, to go on our way and keep doing our works, our good works for the Lord Jesus Christ. I got five minutes, but I can't go through that drawing in five minutes. Any thoughts, comments, or questions? I know I didn't answer everything, or nor explain it. Yes, yes, yes. That is, the, the, those that are wise, studying the scriptures, seeking God, those are the wise. And they will be wise about what is to come, right? Because we can read the scriptures and understand. Um, yes, yeah. Any other? Jim?
That's it. That's it. I agree. I agree. Yes. So for those online, Jim was just talking about the, the great divide that we talked about a few minutes ago, really being globally, not trying to put words in your mouth, Jim, but globally, good versus evil. And, and we are called to be actionable. And I, I, th I think it's fascinating you know, who, who knows how bad it's going to get and how fast it's going to get bad. But I believe, I believe in my lifetime, I'm going to have to make some pretty hard decisions, right? And um, whether I would be law-abiding, I've been law-abiding all my life. but this is law that I follow, right? has to be. And so if it contradicts this, then I'm called to stand firm. I believe the church is called to stand firm. And we need to mentally, and I'll even say physically, be prepared for that, whatever that may be. Ray, you had a, you hit your hand, right? spot on. What Ray said, I wish I would have put a mic in front of you on that. Next time I'll unhook my mic. Ray was talking about spending time in prayer that God would change the situation, but rather his prayer should be allow me to endure it. Give me the strength that I need to persevere. Give me the shoulders right, that I need to bear during these times. Um, yeah. That's right. For a reason. That's right. That's right. Amen. I need to get a lot of microphones out here. For, 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 uh, Sunday School Assembly. There you go. Yes, this, this Sunday is Sunday School Assembly. Uh, we're going to have uh, some, some, I'm going to call it munchies. I think we're having donuts. We're having donuts. We're not talking munchies. We're talking donuts. Kelly made cinnamon rolls. We don't have any left. <laughs> and I'll throw another little teaser out there. Uh, I'm not going to name names, but I do believe we have a testimony that's going to occur Sunday morning. And there's actually been a couple of folks lined up for future ones. So it, uh, you need to be there Sunday morning. Uh, those, those are priceless, in my humble opinion. Isn't that funny how God works things out? That's awesome. That's awesome. If no other questions, Jim, do you, oh, we have comment up here. Hold on one second, Jim. Could be. Could be. Certainly. Certainly. Uh, Jeannie had said the to and fro uh, scripture verse. Could it be verse 4? Uh, could it be people searching for answers? Uh, and absolutely that could be a possibility, right? Uh, without a doubt. Jim, you want to close us tonight? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time when you have 
uh, given us to come and study your word, Lord, and, and to uh, open our eyes, to help us to see, to help us to learn, Lord, to guide us. Uh, Lord, we lift up those that were mentioned earlier for a prayer. We pray for your healing hand, for your comfort, Lord. We thank you for those that, uh, praise reports that we have, Lord. Lord, we pray for your guidance in all that we do. In these trying times to come, Lord, we pray that you will just uh, guide each one of us. Lord, it's been able to say tonight that you put us here in this time, at this place, for a purpose. And we pray, Lord, that that we will fulfill that purpose, that, that we will just open our hearts and minds to your guidance, to your will, Lord. Lord, we lift up this country to you. We pray for an awakening of your children, Lord, to go out and to spread the, the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and, and dying world, Lord. Time is short. And we need to get to work, and we just pray for the strength to do it, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Remember Jesus? <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got a hand held up to me. When, right when I was... Yes. Yes, we did. In South Carolina. Probably the house. Yes, yeah, right. That's right. Yes, we are. Before everybody leaves, let's all do it together. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Amen. Y'all have a good night. Thank you for being here.